Is everybody shy? I think so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How many players there is in the server now? Let's see, list 38. Nice. It's like Vietnam War. You know, it's Valentine's night, so a lot of people didn't come <laughs> because of their wives. Well, Valentine's tomorrow, right? Yeah, but you know, in like one hour it's over, you know, it's 12 o'clock <laughs> and it's the night. <laughs> so let's... Mistře, myslíte, že bych na vás mohl i česky? Jasně, můžeme česky. Protože tady to je hrozně trapný, to tady je totiž. A já bych se vás hrozně rád na něco zeptal. Můžeme si tykat, jo, když tak. Fakt, děkuji moc. Jasně. Já hrozně dlouho toužím s váma mluvit, já jako vaše hra mi ovlivnila celý život. A vlastně. Vietcongem se zabývám hrozně dlouho, všechno mě zajímalo od malička, jak to celý funguje a tak. A to, že s váma teďka můžu mluvit, hrozně si toho vážím. Nikdy se mi nepovedlo vás kontaktovat. Úspěšně. Tak to jsem asi přehlídl. No, to, je, to, to si nedávejte nějak za vinu, nebo... Jako, nebude, nemusí být vaší vinu, já jsem hrozně nervózní, to je, to je hrozný, já jsem úplně, já jsem úplně pod tím. Oh. Sorry guys. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, oh. it was punishment for my check. Oh. Mohl bych se vás zeptat na ten, uh, teda, mohl bych se tě zeptat uh, na ten příspěvek na tom Twitteru. To... Hello guys. Hello. Who is it? Tabasco? Yes. Hey, good to see you. Hey, Ben. Yeah, me too. Hey guys. Co s tím příspěvkem? No, uh, jak, moc jak moc je to myšleno nějak reálně, nebo... Jak moc myslíte, že, nebo myslíš, uh, že by se toho dalo docílit, nebo vlastně jaký byl záměr, když jste to tam, když jste to tam dal? Tak. Zjistit zájem, no, jaký je. Já si myslím, že velký, ale nejsem si jistý, jestli větkom úplně, jestli jako se to vůbec zdalo. Předělat nově nějak, aby to zase lidi to chytlo. Protože já si myslím, že hlavně lidi to baví kvůli tomu, prostě, jak ta hra funguje, jak, jak skvěle je to vyladěný, což si myslím, že jako na tom má velký podíl. To, že si myslím, že na tom má velký podíl to, jak byly ty demíčka, ty první, jak se to dlouho testovalo. A prostě, že ta hratelnost je, že to spoustě lidem vyhovuje. Takže to, to si myslím, že dělá Vietcong Vietcongem. A ne tolik ten příběh a tak. Takže můj názor je takový, že jestli, jestli dělat grafickou změnu Vietcongu, tak jedině na původní engine. Anglicky, jo, nebude vadit? Ale. Co? I will I will answer in English because I think it's very yeah. interesting question. Yeah, that would be great. Thank I you. I will I will translate what was asked. Okay. Yeah, so nice. uh, uh, so so 
Uh, I don't know the name of the... What's your name? Uh, jak se jmenuješ, uh, prosím tě? Flash. So Flash was asking me how how did I how I meant the the tweet I did few days ago about yep. maybe making the game again. Yeah. And uh, there were some concerns about the quality of the game uh, regarding the regarding the fact that the. <clears throat> The game is mainly uh, playable because of the how the weapons are set and the gameplay mechanics. Yeah. And it would be, me and there was concern that if it's remade into better graphics, yeah, uh, it may it may lose its uh, charm. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so the opinion w uh, was mentioned that. If a remake uh, would be made, and it has to be made on the default, the original engine. So, uh, so that was the that was the question. Okay. Let's hear your answer, so, please. <laughs> so answer. So, uh, so first about the tweet. So I I only tweeted the the question about. Uh, how people would be interested in the like some kind of a rework of this game I'm not yeah. I don't want to call it remake because I don't have the uh, rights for the for the IP it, uh, it was lost in acquisition yeah bet between illusion and 2k mm -hmm. so uh, whatever, whatever game uh, I will do, it will never be, it will never be Vietcong. But uh, yeah, we can. Uh, I think we can completely revive the mechanics and gameplay, uh, feel, experience, levels, and so on. If we do it, platform. Yeah. And I think. And I think um. I think uh, could be done. We we spent quite some time, like making the making the mechanics feel very good. Actually, this level was one of our first levels that we did, uh -huh. and. We tested the AI, we tested a lot of things here, so I, I think I still quite remember the way how we uh, ended up with this gameplay, so... Okay. Well, uh, so far... Uh about uh, whatever uh, Flash just said about the uh, feel and the graphics of the game. Um, honestly, in my opinion, I, I don't think that the graphics is the, the, the big game here. Uh, I mean, if you are going to work on, a, on something new, def definitely it's going to be with good and the new graphics uh, with the new day's engines. Uh, however, uh, in my opinion, the most important part is the f real feel of the, the gameplay. Uh, the, the movement of the player, uh, the guns uh, that was used in the game, um, uh, the kind of aiming, the kind of shooting, mm -hmm. the speed of reloading, uh, all these little details can make the, the real feel of the game. If we can really copy the, the, sa the same real feel of the game, and with whatever new graphics we are going to have, maybe we can, for example, do... Uh, uh, a new maps with the same design as Helongport, for example, Stream, and another popular maps like NV8, that's exactly in the same size, but with much better graphics and so on. Uh, the same as any other new games and new modern games, for example, if you look on, into Battlefield game, uh, for example, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. In Battlefield 3, there was a very successful map, if you ever heard about it. It, it was called Metro, for example. 
So they made Metro again in Battlefield 4, but with much better graphics and they removed a lot of bugs and so on. So it may be a really good idea to, to, to combine the, the old maps in the new graphics with the same feel and for sure without all the, the bugs we already have in the game and uh, all the uh, weak engine with all the cheats and so on. I think it could be a very interesting project. Uh, Yarek, I, I would like to ask, please, uh, in your opinion, uh, do you think it's easier for you to uh, update the current version or to start uh, from scratch another project called something else, for example? Do, do we still have uh, the option to, to update the current version of Vietcong or uh, it should be something uh, new? I mean, something else at all uh no i think uh we are not able to do any updates on the game i see okay fair enough so everything is going to be new it will include the new graphics i got you <laughs> yeah i can imagine By the way, is the engine license the same like the uh, same like the game? Sorry, what do you mean? Uh, is, asked. is the engine under the same license as uh, Vietcong itself? Well, the engine. He asks if the engine and the game have the same uh, license or they have different separated license. Well, uh, the engine itself, uh, it's not uh, it's not connected with the license that take two holds. It's a third on property. The company still exists, but uh, I'm not sure if the engine would be possible to revive mm -hmm. in a way that something new could be done there. Yeah. So poten potentially, you can still update the engine. Okay. Uh, it can work uh, with current files. Yeah, I think uh, Yarek is trying to say that he cannot uh, use the current engine to update the game or whatever uh, we already have. Uh, if he's going to work, he's going to work on something completely new. Am I right, yeah. Yarek? Yes, yeah. that would so, be the case. If we do something, uh, we'll keep this this game untouched yeah. and uh, we we'll create a create a new project with which would preserve the same atmosphere, the same vibe, the same feeling. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the discussion about the, the current uh, version of Vietcong, uh, it's not here. We cannot discuss it anymore. So the discussion is open about a uh, new project. And guys, if anyone here on the Discord channel can hear us and have any questions, please uh, go ahead. Yes, me. Uh, what about the platform uh, New Vietcong come? Platform like Steam Origin? Uh, we must have it. No? Nintendo Switch, huh? <laughs> it's the best platform now for playing shooters. Oh no? Oh, I'm joking. Which no. One? Uh... Which one, Eric? <laughs> Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, PC, definitely. Uh, that's <laughs> the. Uh, actually, I think is that Tarasco uh, been asking if the game is going to be under Steam or under Origin or under Blizzard and so on. Am I right, Tarasco? This is yes. your question. Yeah. Yes, we need platform. Yeah, he mean if if it's going to be under a parent uh, program like Steam or Origin or any of the modern programs that uh, you know you can 
buy so, like names from it. And what what would what would you prefer? What would you prefer, Tabasco? I prefer platform like. Uh, yeah, which one? The platform uh, like Steam, Origin, Gog. I I heard about yeah. Gog. So Yark is Yogi. asking, which one, which one would you prefer? Steam or Origin or I Blizzard? I see there is another version of Vietcong, but it's not Vietcong at all. If there is on Steam, but uh, we you need can't that forget. to Origin or something. Yeah, but Tabasco. Uh, Tabasco, Tabasco. We need Yark, some Yark is trying to explain that you can forget about Vietcong. Also, if it's going to be a new version, it's yeah, going yeah. to be another name. So it doesn't matter if in Steam there is a game called uh, Vietcong. It really doesn't matter. Yes, yes. There is. So it can be also on Steam and then under another name because it's going to be another game. So. Yes, and look on the chat, uh, Retrosonic. Uh, he said release VC on Digital Shop would be good. I assume that's not possible legally, right? Because um, is it is it like legally possible to re-release the game? Uh, actually, Yarek is trying to explain for a few times now that he's not going to work on the same version of Vietcong. Also, he's not going to use the Vietcong name for the next game. Mm. Yes, so, yeah, because you don't so, license. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so legally there is no problem at all. Let's imagine that we will do a game which will maybe be named, I don't know, Tomato Soup? Yeah, exactly. And, 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 it, will, and it will be released on Steam, Epic Store, we'll yeah. do version 4, PlayStation 5, exactly. Xbox Series X, or whatever name they have. And yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sure everyone here in the channel loves the, the name Vietcong, but uh, the real says here that uh, realistic we cannot use the Vietcong name. For example, forget about the Vietcong 3, forget about the Vietcong, and it, it's going to be totally new game, totally new name. Yeah. But it's going yeah, to also have talked the about with the some creators of game and they said the same. We cannot uh, they cannot put Vietcong anymore in the name. Yeah. So forget about the name. And believe me, name is not a problem. <laughs> well, and also we need to preserve this Vietcong, right? Yeah. Maybe the name of the next Vietcong should be voted by the Vietcong player, actually. Should make a vote. Or let your imagination do it. But tomato soup is okay. Mm, maybe. We can do some poll about that. And the game is now developed in Betfly or or is it just some small group of people? I haven't said that the game is being developed. <laughs> oh, so just tests now, yeah. That's just speculation. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nothing of. But I haven't said uh, that it's not. Mm -hmm. oh, I have a question nice. for Yarek. Hello, yes. Yarek. Hi. Right, yeah, just something different, slightly different. Hi, I'm Marty. Marty. Uh, I wanted to ask you when you were, how did you find that wonderful, wonderful music? Uh, very yeah. influential. It sounded like the Hendrix kind of vibe from the '60s. And I'm just curious how you found that, being a musician myself, how did you find that wonderful music? Was it created especially for the game? 
Yes, it was created specially for the game and it was uh, performed and uh, composed by our animator, Peter ah. Mores. I think it's one of the most enduring things about the game is, is that music. It's just so distinctive. I love it. So uh, I'm still in contact with Peter uh, and I hope uh, he would be definitely interested to do a uh, some music. Fantastic. So, I look forward to it. Nice, very nice. Uh, cool. Yeah, I think music is important. Definitely. I think the sound as well was such a big, what you were saying earlier about the engine and the sound, and the, the, the graphics all interrelated. I think the sound is such an important, immersive part of the game. And for a game that's 18 years old or whatever, 20 years old, it's just amazing that it still feels so authentic in the game. I love it. Yeah, about the sound, I still like Sometimes to stop in the jungle and listen to the sounds of birds and stuff. But the sound is very important in the game, especially for the single player if it's planned. I actually have the feeling that a lot of uh, Vietcong players are made are uh, very calm people. And that is probably because the, the ambience of the game really chills you down. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yes. Yarek, yeah. can I ask you something? Yes, sure. Uh, if a new game is uh, created, will there be check dubbing? Uh, yeah, I think. Czech studios should definitely make Czech dubbing. I'm glad that the Mafia remake received and I think Czech games should have Czech dubbing. Můžu se taky něco zeptat? Můžu česky jednu otázku? Jasně. I will translate. Speak in Czech. Já jsem se chtěl, já jsem se chtěl jenom zeptat, jestli bude možný uchovat ten systém na vlajky, protože ne vždycky to asi bylo možný. A žádná hra se teďka takhle nehraje, tak nevím, jestli by to jako... Nevím, jak by to bralo lidi, jestli by je to jako oslovilo, nebo jestli by tohle to bylo v pohodě. A druhá otázka, jak dlouho by tenhle ten projekt zabral? So the question was about uh, whether it's possible to preserve the capture the flag mode. And uh, I think if we would do uh, something like Viet Cong, we should definitely have flags because it's such yeah. a significant game mode. CTF is a very important mode. And uh, I believe it would be possible also to inv to involve uh, new modes uh, from the the modern modes, um, something new from the modern games, like uh, maybe bigger map with uh, the option of uh, world territory. Map. Yeah, um, it would be possible too. Yeah, I think there the real the play as a squad. That was a that was a great mode. I think real war from battlefield. No, from uh, Viet Cong has R W real war. Ah, uh, arts. Yeah. R W. Yeah. R W. Yeah, yeah. It's a great mode. It was it was 
where to see that in my vehicle? Yes. And did I just look into this chain? Just to říkal ještě tu druhou část. Tím se to nějak... jak, jak dlouho by to tak výhleduje trvalo ten projekt, jestli by to bylo v rámci třeba sedmi let, nebo jestli to bude za rok, nebo tak jako orientačně. So, hypothetical question, potential release date of possible hypothetical remake of this game. So, uh, well, I was thinking to uh, hit the you know anniversary 20th years anniversary of the game which is in when do you know when is the anniversary of the game being released 20th anniversary uh, march in march, march 2023 26th of march. no no 26th no It's all 23, yes, that's the yeah. 2003, yeah. So I would, I would love to it's still so good. <laughs> work towards this date, but you know, I can't do any promises. I, I haven't confirmed that the game is in making. Let's wait for confirmation then. <laughs> in the future okay. there will be. <laughs> so 23 is... 23 is almost behind the corner. Two years, so you will probably uh, use uh, some third party engine, or I don't think you will uh, develop again your own, right? Mm, I think it's impossible to develop engines on your own these days. Okay. Oof. I believe it would take a lot of time. Grammars. Hundreds of programmers and several years in advance for making the engine. Would it be possible, for example, to uh, uh, publish the source code of original game engine, for example, for education, education purpose? Not sure if it's possible. Uh, and I think it will not be possible for educational purposes because <clears throat> the engine and the game is so hacked that uh, when we are thinking about it many years ago the programmers were ashamed of this idea because uh, it's not really a clean code just because of that it's pretty sad <laughs> No, no, the problem is also uh, that uh, it's just right or something like that. <clears throat> like what? Wait, I, I'm not. I'm not able to yeah. answer this question. I, I don't know. I don't have the source code myself. So. 
Okay, thank you. It, it will be great anyway because uh, sometimes the uh, players have to hack the game, for example, for Windows 10 or some new systems. So it's it will be great, but I understand that. Yeah, uh, well, you know, we haven't made a game for with Windows 10 in mind. True. Well, it's I'm surprised. Maybe we need to speak about the future, another past. But you can still talk about future of the origin again. <laughs> Um, actually, no, you cannot talk about the future of the original game, because it's going to remain the same. It's not possible to update it. And the community... It's the, player, it's the players who are making the game. Yeah, I think so. Correct. The game is the players, True. and they will make the future. Even it's if like the engine game. stays the same. And I'm actually proud of this community. Just... Mm -hmm. Uh, myslím si, že by bylo fajn do té, uh, pokud teda bude do té nové hry, tak uh, dát v replay modu, aby to bylo z první osoby. Protože tohleto vidění se hrozně chybělo. Obecně až, asi jako lepší setting. Obecně no. asi jako lepší ten spektátor mod, protože to v té jedničce byl takový že když se někdo třeba podezříval nebo tak, tak nešlo vidět, co on vidí ze svého pohledu a nešlo se ani přetáčet třeba dozadu a tak ty důležitý věci, jo. So, uh, I will just translate, there was a suggestion that if we will have some remake of Vietcong, we should pay attention to some better spectator mode. Especially to allow some kind of control against cheating. I think uh, the use of replay files is one of the most beautiful things about that old game as well as being able to record replays and view the game through everyone's eyes as well as the static cameras and stuff like that. It's a wonderful feature. So guys, can you tell me, like, uh, how you, you how you are playing the game? How, what's what's the most important for you? What kind of uh, modes and types of missions and matches you enjoy? Uh, if I can talk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Raise your hand, whoever is going to start. <laughs> that is indeed a very good question. Okay, I'll start. Um, like, I'm all centered about cooperative mode. Um, play without HUD. No, that's one thing I loved about Vietcong. You would just have uh, minimal information on your screen and let the immersion work. You know, less is sometimes more, and um, and also the in-game voice was very nice. The positional hearing for for um, acting tactically, and again also for the immersion. Immersion is the big big thing about Vietcong. You know, this is what I feel. Agree, agree. Yes. 
cooperative atmosphere immersion um mm -hmm. in my opinion ctf and a to g is very interesting for a challenge also dm is uh, very nice for fun dm is the death match so uh you are saying co uh, competitive mode Yes, uh, True. capture the flag mode. Capture flag mode, which is CTF, A to G. And uh, the death match, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's definitely good if you have both again. No, I love that about Viet Cong. I'd like to add, uh, I like the tactical view of the Viet Cong. Like, it's not about rushing and something like that, but. Uh, to use brain and move something like smart I mean I think uh, in-game voice was I was surprised to see in-game voice in such an old game but that that had some lovely bonuses to, to be able to use that but without even the team speak or and having to be close to someone to, to speak to them. I think that was really nice. But in terms of the modes, I think for me, Capture the Flag was the, the best ever uh, real war I love, but nobody ever plays it. <laughs> and um, and co-op as well, cooperative, just a beautiful way to, as long as the bots are smart enough and it achieves yeah. enough of a challenge, then cooperative is a beautiful mode because it really, really forces good teamwork and really forces good realistic uh, communication and objectives and stuff so can you remind me the rules of the real war scenario because i kind of forgot <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um it's i guess you have say six flags for example in a in a map and uh one or more of your team has to be close to the flag to turn it to your team so you take the flag one at a time and if you get all six flags then you score the point for the for the win for that round or, or for however you set up the the map so it's like okay. the proximity to the flag i believe the proximity to the flag will take it i believe that's it and so you, your team has to secure all the flags and hold all the flags to get the point. Mm. So it's... Uh, I think we were trying to copy Battlefield with this one, I guess. Kind of. Yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's fair to say, yeah. Um, but obviously capture the flag is, is a different level because you have to carry that object from one place to another and you can drop it and someone else can get it and it can be returned and so there's so many more dynamics to that situation whereas static yeah. flags that stay in one place that that's i guess yeah it's very different can someone remind me Again, Yarek, we didn't hear uh, what, what you said. The ATG mode? Yeah, the ATG mode is simply a team versus the another team, and whoever dies will die until the end of the round, and uh, a team must kill all the enemies from the other team. Uh, you cannot, like search and you destroy, cannot right? run again. Uh, kind of, yeah. You cannot, you cannot simply you cannot, uh, uh, spawn again. You need to spawn at the next round. Yeah, yeah that's right. it's like. Mm. What about uh, the spot uh, feature, guys? The spotting. Uh, I mean, uh, how about having a spotting option? For example, in big maps, uh, some player could uh, mark a spot point, like a hot point or enemy point and then that that point appears for everyone in the same team uh, 
uh, it can be available for a specific modes uh, or specific maps, like large maps or so. It would be uh, helpful and better for team play. I mean, something like pink feature. Yeah, yeah pink feature, pink of location. Yeah, it's kind of um, common nowadays with games, yeah? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I, I think Rising Storm is doing that very well, actually. Yeah, m most of the new games have this feature now, uh, especially on the big maps. Yeah, but it's not that annoying in Rising Storm like in, in other games. Yeah, that's true. M it must yeah. be smart. It's very subtle, little. yeah. Yeah. It must be, uh, must be simple, little thing, and exactly, not yeah. too big and annoying. Exactly. It would take complete like it's really hard to get that right because there's a lot of the with the immersion. You know, if you do it wrong, then the whole immersion is gone. <laughs> True. Yeah, and actually, the the point is to 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 be able to to mark the position, also to remove the mark. I mean the mark mm -hmm. it will be it will be it will be there for some seconds for example it will be there for 10 seconds and if by mistake you made the mark in the wrong place you should be able to remove this mark as well it would be a really good feature mm. the thing about features i think is and you know def uh, game modes and features in games sometimes the most wonderful thing about a game is that you can play it really simply if you want to you can turn off some of the features or you can run a server that has a more basic setup or, mm. or players have the options to turn things on and off in their game because you know like what confused master was saying about immersion you know, some people just love to go hard go fast you know and sometimes i feel like that but other times i just want to sit back and relax and I, I don't want all the little markers in the game and the writing on the screen or i want to take all that away sometimes so yeah, whatever you decide to do if you do this this new project it would be great to have the options to turn them on and off some of these things so that it doesn't become too noisy and um, visually um hectic you know yeah, well i'm definitely i'm definitely not a fan of uh like a lot of the UI, well, that's, that's why the no UI mode in the first place, because we feel more, much more important for the immersion. Like if you look at some uh, interfaces of, I don't know, Call of Duty or Battlefield, where you basically see, I don't know, hundreds of stuff on the, on your, or it's terrible, you don't play the game, you just look at your interface. Yeah, if I can say, Rotom was also very special because uh, you don't see uh, any shit on the screen, you don't need like health bar, like ammo, you, you just see your game and you play like hardcore mode, you know. So clean and lean. It's very I special agree. for that because you see only scoreboard and that's all uh, you need. Yeah, well, we were trying to inspire ourselves from the reality, you know, if, if I'm on playing uh, airsoft in the in the forests mm -hmm. or <laughs> participating yeah. with uh, we, you know, these clubs of military history. And like the feeling of being lost, no information. We ha we've been ambushed by some group forest, so we hit the dirt, shoot back, then retreat. But in fact, we haven't seen these guys. They w we just heard the. That was it. <laughs> so it's <laughs> it's quite significant information that you have in elements and this to um, recreate 
and it's work when you have so many things in your face. Chtěl bych se zeptat, podle mě, já a spoustu mých přátel, kteří tu hru pořád jako hrajem, tak se nám líbí, jak je to vlastně pomalý a co se v té hře vlastně nemůže sprintovat ani zpozovat ani nic podobného. Tak bych řekl si v té nové hře, co takového bude, protože si myslím, že to je zbytečný. A Spousta lidí by to ani nechtělo. So. It's about uh, pace. So. I agree with. The Slower, there's because it's about thinking, about deciding what to do, not about rushing from one place to another. So I'm the you know, if you are in the forest, try to run. Uh, you know, I don't know, programs of ammunition and weapons with you. Your speed won't be. Like I'm definitely not fan of games. Like the worst was probably the. The worst with the game by like the crazy shirt just jump and shooting variable so Můžu jednou do toho vstoupit, hodně lidí tady píše, že je tě špatně slyšet, jestli nemáš nějaký internetový dropy nebo něco. Asi jo, asi mám. I agree. I have probably some internet drops. So sorry for my uh, lack of understanding. Join. Můžu, můžu se ještě zeptat, jestli, jestli uh, plánuješ, že se stane v té hře stejné množství granátů, protože uh, v jiných hrách tohle to vůbec není. Většinou má každý třeba jeden, já nevím, výbuch, ne jeden smoke, jeden flash nebo ně, něco v tomhle tom smyslu. A ve Vietkongu jsou čtyři jako výbušný. Jestli tohle to plánuje zůstat. A druhá otázka, jestli uh, plánuješ do té hry nějaký vizualizace těch zbraní, například ve formě nějakých skinů nebo něco jako za odměnu, nebo nevím, něco v tom smyslu, jako je Battlefieldu se to bude kopírovat, nebo jestli to zůstane holý, tak jak to je teď? No, ty granáty by si představil jak? Kolik granátů? Jeden granát? Já, no, ne tak úplně, já se jenom ptám, protože ta hra je, nebo většina map je teďka hodně o těch granátech. 
a je to s tím jako sloučený, tak uh, jenom jestli se to plánuje měnit nebo ne, jestli zůstanou ty čtyři výbuchy, nebo jestli to bude jinak. Jest, uh, nevím, jestli třeba budou dva, nebo... So the question... <coughs> the question was about uh, amount of grenades. Uh, whether we'll keep four or we'll have more or less. Uh, I honestly don't know. All different <laughs> types or different types of grenades are still the same. So what do you think guys about grenades in Vietcong? Is it good that it has four frag grenades? Uh, Is it... Honestly, for small maps, uh, four grenades are being too much. Too much. Uh, yep. Yeah, Agreed. exactly. Es especially in little maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, the, the amount of players. Uh, if if you are going to play ten players in the same server, uh, in small maps, uh, if every grenade player game. will have, yeah, exactly, it will be grenade game definitely. So I believe two grenades should be enough for soldier, in my opinion. Two two grenades, two frag grenades. <laughs> Any other opinions? I like regarding I like I, that I would can be controlled smoke. by server admins because I think you know if you're playing CTF versus co-op or a different game mode, it, that can influence whether you have no grenades or one grenade or four. So I think I think that should be an optional decision. But is isn't it just too powerful when there is like many grenades? I don't know. Well, it, um, yeah, it can turn it. Yeah, it turns it into like Grass said. It can turn it into a bit of a grenade game. But yeah, I guess yeah. you know Def when you definitely in the little maps. Yeah, maybe certain classes should have limitations. Like you know, maybe the engineer is the only one that has four or something like that. True, true. Good point. Yeah. I mean, currently, uh, most of the classes, uh, not sniper for sure, uh, have the option to get four grenades per round, which is really too much for small, uh, for small maps. And bigger and, maps. Uh, bigger maps. I believe three so nades per, per per soldier would be enough. So it can be defined like uh, uh, amount of the grenades per map, in that case, like based on the map. What do you think? Yeah, could be. Yeah, that that could work well. Like and I guess you are. Uh, yeah, come on. And I guess you are asking. Uh, you are speaking about uh, competitive modes, right? Mm, yeah. Right. Because in in cope it doesn't matter how many. Or? Yeah. I agree. Uh, what about smoke, guys? Don't you think smoke is useful feature? G smoke grenades? Uh, I no, think uh, only to frag grenades. Not not smoke or flash or anything. Mm -hmm. Smoke is uh, fine. Like, 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 it's cool. Yeah, I mean, there true. was smoke in single player. Vietcom single player had lots of smoke for marking yeah. things as well as so uh, why not? I mean our modern PCs can handle the, the rendering of smoke much better now than, than in back single then, player. So I think not. there were even even the flash grenades like uh, like the light, right? Yeah, but how how about a uh, smoke grenade for one class? I mean uh, uh, for one specific class. <laughs> Uh, maybe for a sniper, for example, since sniper doesn't have any mates, so maybe he will have the option to get one smoky grenade. Yeah, it's mm. a very, very important concern because when I think of uh, what was it, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, um, everybody hated it when somebody used smokes. It really depends whether you are playing in an organized um, competition, team versus team, then it can make a lot of sense to use smoke decently, you know, but in a, in a public match, uh, people would argue a lot. So again, yeah. I think server settings uh, are important. So, custom server, I mean, uh, custom, custom server settings, 
would be great, yeah. Můžu taky zeptat, prosím tě? Jo, jo. Bude, klidně se bude, bude možnost uh, taky hostovat vlastní servery, jako mít vlastní dedicated servery, nebo to bude muset dělat jako třeba, já nevím, těch 20 lidí, to se asi nedá hostovat jako doma, že jo? Pro pár kamarádů nebo tak. The question was about the uh, possibility of uh, players having their own servers to host the game. Like the own dedicated uh, server, yep. Well, I think some games don't allow it because uh, they want to have control. Uh, but on the other hand, some games uh, support it because it gives players much more control, much more uh, possibilities to own and set up and use their own servers. Yeah, customize it on their own. Um, especially, especially impossible. It's uh, when uh, you are using some uh, free-to-play mechanics. Then obviously, these companies they have to run the game on their own servers. They don't want this to be like controlled by the players. But uh, I'm actually a very big enemy of any free-to-play mechanics. So yeah. I wouldn't. If there will be, what? If there will be yeah. possibility of a dedicated server, uh, do you plan to support uh, other operating systems like running on Linux, which is uh, more probability of the server operating system than Windows Server, for example? Uh, I understand. Uh, the benefits i have no answer because i know that I gaming is mostly on windows uh, operating system but uh, yeah, yeah servers can be clients yeah for the client side but the for server side can run i would say on any other supported system so but it depends if they want to provide it Uh, I, I agree that it's better, but uh, I honestly can't say <laughs> if it's okay. too irritating. I, I, I understand the benefits of uh, servers on Unix because they are cheaper, slots are cheaper, True. and uh, it can, mm -hmm. and it can uh, utilize the power of the server much better. But mm -hmm, yes. So I'm aware of these uh, things, uh, but I, I can't. I think I it's can't. one. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Go, go on. I, I was just going to say I think it's lovely. It's always been a lovely thing about the economy that if you don't have access to a server to, to run online through a company or whatever, or a dedicated server of your own that you can just start a server on your PC and your friends can come and join you and you can make a private server or a public server. I just I just think that's a wonderful feature um, that just brings more players into the game and it allows more people to try things and experiment. And yeah, I just think it's a great feature. Well, it only brings clever players. The stupid ones are actually not able to do that. <laughs> which actually <laughs> which makes it the game much cleaner i would say um mohl bych něco říct yes yeah. another advantage uh, aside it is uh, that you can run it on let's say local area network so it's possible to run it in let's say some small group of people without internet connectivity and uh, this is one of the one of the advantage also. Yeah, a LAN party. Brilliant. Yes. Mm, zatím se tady poslouchám, uh, tak uh, to vypadá tak, jako kdybyste chtěl udělat tu stejnou hru dokola. Že já teda osobně bych třeba chtěl 
jako nějakou modernizaci třeba něčeho. Že nechci hrát zase tu 18 let, já teď nevím, 18 let starou hru. Tak Možná už je víc. Doufám. Tak doufám, jako, že dojde k nějaký modernizaci v nějakým směru a že to nebude jedna ku jedny akrát s lepšíma texturama. Okay. So uh, there was a comment in Czech. I will translate. Uh, there is a worry that if the hypothetical remake happens uh, regarding what was said today, it seems like it could be like one-to-one -one copy of the game with all the mechanics, all the systems, and that's maybe not want not wanted to have exactly the same game because for this we have this game. Uh, and m maybe there will be nice to have some uh, new features, some uh, some uh, updates of gameplays or of some features. So uh, so uh, sure, uh, answer this yes, uh, I agree. The industry and the user experience have to move uh, in these years. So certain things are common, like. We discussed like about the ping system, for example, or you know some other things. So uh, if there is this hypothetical remake, it's definitely not going to be one-to-one -one copy of this game. That's for sure. Uh, how, how about uh, adding some scoops to the guns, guys? Uh, I mean, like, um, some scoops. You mean sniper scopes? Uh, no, not snipers. We already have them. I mean, another scopes. Maybe on the AK, it's possible to modify it and add scoop, or on the M16, uh, instead of the iron sight all the time. It can be also a little upgrade. Well, yeah, weapons, like, uh, we, we can think about uh, various weapons. The thing is that uh, I think it was, like, in the 90s when they started making guns with these rails. So you can uh, really uh, put all Sorry. the modifications there. But in the 60s, it was not really the case. So it was really hard to put uh, some some device on the on the on the gun. Yeah. But uh, I'm not. Uh, let Let's not discuss what weapons would be there or not. I think. How about having uh, girl skins? Since we, we, we have some girls playing the, the Fiat Kong one already, uh, so girls' skin would be also interesting. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, yeah. back in the day it was, that was difficult to have uh, different skeletons, different animations in the memory. Mm -hmm. Also, our team was quite small. So we are not able to uh, do everything. Also, at the time, much easier. Girls were only reading books. So uh, <laughs> now, I hope now they are not here. I hope well, they are well, not here. <laughs> not in the VC, they weren't. In the VC, they were fighting their asses off. <laughs> no, no, I mean. <laughs> I mean, oh, with, mean computer, with computers oh, 20 years ago. <laughs> no, actually, Yarek, uh, 20 years ago, I, I knew about like six girls who played the Viet Cong all the time. You know, and they was more addicted than me. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. at least 10 years ago, I would say. Yeah, there was a lot of girls. Yeah, no, I'm just joking. Oh, no, yeah. it's uh, it's true that uh, female players are now uh, uh, quite often. So definitely, it would be nice to have uh, skins 
for female so. characters. Yeah, voices and so. It's not so historically accurate for the US side because US they haven't really got girls. Maybe some nurses uh, on the bases, but not in the field. If I'm not mistaken, but on uh, VC side there were a big portion of of girls. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And what about weapon skins? Uh. Oh, come on! That that's being Call of Duty, man. <laughs> well, uh. You know, I can imagine some people can have some, you know, little toys or talismans on the guns, but I don't, I can't really, I can't really imagine someone would spray his uh, gun pink and go, go into jungle. <laughs> I, I don't I... see anything crazy, just some few colors. Oh, maybe not colors, maybe bushes, maybe items on the gun. Bushes, yeah, for or, That's a good point. or some kind of camouflages. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Bandages, pa for example. Yeah, painting is not an option for sure. But uh, some objects, you know, like bushes and some maybe cigarette, cigarettes packages. But yeah, it yeah. will be 18 plus game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. It is. That's actually what I miss in other games to kind of customize the kit realistically, you know, like not over the top. Well, you know, the teenagers playing these games, they want to look like banana. <laughs> <laughs> As in PUBG, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, not every big Warzone. game has to copy Fortnite, yeah. So, uh, I can assure you that in in any of my game, there will be no banana skins. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, really thank you, because it's <laughs> going to ruin everything. I want to have, like, a gritty game. Nothing flashy, no, like, colorful or whatever. <laughs> yeah, a realistic game, as yes. much as possible. Well, I think I like bananas, but uh, I don't like players using bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Being in shape of bananas and running around. I think that's uh, reserved for some other games, <laughs> which have uh, much wider audience, but uh, different people. Já bych chtěl taky zmínit, že je docela dobrý na Větkongu takový ten způsob vrhání těch granátů. Já jsem se třeba osobně nesetkal v jinačí hře, kde by se mi granáty házely tak pěkně jako ve Větkongu jednice. Jestli chápete, co se tím snažím popsat? So, uh, there was a note about uh, how good or interesting are the throwing of grenades in Vietcong. Um, so the, we did the decision to have grenades as a special uh, weapon that you have to equip before you can throw. Because obviously some games, they have the quick throw. So you have your gun, you press the button and the grenade, you, your third hand throws the grenade. Uh, but you don't have much control. I don't know if you have tried throwing grenades, like in reality. Mm -hmm. you try to hit uh, something. I think possible to try it with a potato. Yeah, with potatoes or with some uh, uh, pine cones in the forest, you know, and try to hit trees, for example. With the pine cones, 
Mm -hmm. um, guys, what do you think about the distance of the grenades currently in the current version of Viet Cong? Uh, I actually think that the current distance we throw the grenades is not realistic. It's going really, really, really far away from you. I mean, it's bad for me. In my gameplay, I kill a lot of people with grenades and I, ca I can cover <laughs> most of the map with grenades. But uh, yeah. Maybe we can make the the distance of the grenade after throwing uh, not too far, because uh, it also ruins the the balance a little bit. I, I think, I it's think that's a fair point. I think I think you've got a fair point. I I haven't actually thrown a real grenade myself, Yarek, but my brother has, and he said it was a lot heavier than he imagined. A lot heavier. That's why in, in some armies they're taught to throw it with a straight arm rather than to to, to bend their arm and throw it because you can actually you can throw it further with a with a with a straight arm like a like a catapult like a trebuchet you know. But I agree. I think um, maybe the distance of the grenade could be balanced a little bit better. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I mean, not to take it really short. Yeah, but not too far as it is right now because right now it goes really far and i think it goes further if you jump when you're throwing it as well exactly you can uh, jump and you can win another few meters yeah but in my opinion we're not playing uh, war simulator enough uh, i think we should think uh, maybe Viet Cong uh, also so special in this case agree that's yeah that's also true i think mm. What's your favorite map? Viet Cong. I mean, from the standard maps. NVA base for sure. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. NVA base? NVA and Indian NVA country. It's, it's so, do you know an. Uh, do you know what NV, NVA base is? What, yeah, what's the inspiration of the map? Na on myslí podklon Karaj, jako ono, ono se to jmenuje dost podobně, po, podklon Karaj nebo něco takového. Jo, jo. No, no, I mean, no, I mean, the NVA base, or how it's called, uh, the map is actually uh, the Counter-Strike map Dust. I don't know uh -huh. if you've analyzed it, but we just copied the the map. I played this map for many years, and I didn't find out it's a clone of Dust. <laughs> uh, which map is clone of Dust, please? <laughs> NVA base. I mean, structurally, not uh, not the space itself, obviously, but it's reskinned. Dust. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's an amazing map. Well balanced. Yeah, yeah. it's like if and you copy now. the good map. <laughs> yeah, and Heloport would be great with some modifications. For example, Heloport is not fair enough for the VC side. If we can, uh, we can have another tunnel going from the VC base and turning around the VC, the US base. It would be much more balanced. Currently, Heloport is not being balanced map. It would be good map if there is one more tunnel going from the VC base, in my opinion. Well, I don't know what you think, guys. Yeah, how important is unbalanced, but in every game you get uh, some map which is a uh, heavy city sided or two sided or something, but yeah, maybe we are talking yeah, too much about changes, you know. Uh, Mm. We love the Viet Cong, uh, how, how, how Viet Cong is made, you know, so it's probably just uh, the modernization is the best way, I think. Game based, like, on, yeah, on Viet Cong, like don't, 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 change many, don't change many things, is, but because uh, that's why you love Viet Cong, you know. It's not like uh, other games. 
Yeah, true, but uh, making making balance for both sides, it will bring fun for both sides, you know, during the match. For example, now, if a team goes for a match in Hellingford, the other team is not too happy about it when playing yeah, the PC yeah, side. Of course, I'm not talking about the match, you know, but uh, I mean yeah. generally. I definitely agree with you that big a big change for the game, it will lose the real feel of the Vietcong game. Yeah. So, no yeah. Changes. No big changes, no big changes. That's correct. I, I quite like maps where you play one side and you feel like the odds are stacked against you more. Like you feel it's 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 unfair to you to play because then you get to play the other side for the second half of the match and and you can take advantage of, of the other. So I'm saying I almost I like I like sometimes to have imbalance in maps because it makes you want to play both sides. It makes you want to get better at the side that's harder. It challenges you more. I like that. Like, but of course, Mar it's not good to win maps, I think. Marty, that's not too fun in the leagues, man. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> 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 it's not too fun, man. No one wants yeah. to play an unbalanced uh, side in the, the matches. I mean, in the league matches. I'll tell you what, we'll make you a, co we'll make you a version of the editor of Hello <laughs> with your tunnel. Okay, we'll make you one with a tunnel. Just wait. <laughs> I, I, I already I already have the idea, you know, where the tunnel should go from to make it uh, really fair. <laughs> cool. So guys, how many of you are playing uh, some leagues uh, in Vietcong? Sixteen teams, I think. Uh, Sixteen teams or five. No, but people. you guys are playing it actively, or is it something that you don't do, or? How yes, many we are, we are only, only some of only some of us what I see here. Maybe ten people here, maybe fifteen people here. I don't know. Regards the league, I think it's more like a, a fair gameplay. I mean uh me myself I left the league uh for two reasons. First of all personal uh reason because I have a new son and so on, doesn't matter. And the second uh, reason is the fair play in the game. Uh, fair play is very important for leagues. Um, the current league doesn't have any support for fair gameplay. For example, uh, empty cheats that doesn't exist. And uh, the, the, sp the current spectator option is very poor to detect cheaters. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone can bypass it easily. So mm -hmm. it's not real fun to play in a league without an anti cheat or without an eye watching everything going in there. It doesn't matter if there is a cheaters or not, but it really gives trust between the players and it really gives um, the fun to play the game. In my opinion, it's a very important part. Okay. Yeah, but, but, but still, there are about uh, 180 or 190, maybe 200 uh, active players which uh, who plays the league still actively. So, uh, well, I, honestly, quite, that's a, a perfect lot. number. Yeah, yeah, perfect, yeah it's perfect quite perfect a lot for the. It's it's perfect number for the current situation of Vietcong. I totally agree. I mean, even with the all, with all the complications we have in Vietcong, people are still rushing to play this game. So definitely first person uh, spectator option would be really uh, important feature, Yarek. The first person spectator option and not only the third person. Mm. Uh, jinak můžu dodat, že ten spectator by mohl být uh, vlastně dobrý pro mčr, že by se mohli udělat vlastně jako takové zápasy mezi sebou. Jelikož každý rok vlastně pořádáme vlastně mčr se pořádá na Vietnam. A tak by to vlastně bylo nějaký prostředí pro ně. Yeah, I think the spectator in first person is just a complication um, for the networking. Uh, that's why it was not included in the uh, original game. Mm -hmm. Because uh, synchronization of the third person, it's obviously in the game because you see you see your other players 
moving. Uh, but the animations in first person are not being synchronized. So that's why it's missing. And it's just a little bit of programming work that would be needed. But at the time when we were doing this game, how about the option to report the player during the gameplay and another platform will handle the reports and check the logs of the person? Yes, obviously. Like, uh, you know, these uh, support for these uh, eSport stuff uh, has evolved in the last 15 years quite a lot. Yeah. We never imagined that uh, someone could play Vietcong competitively like this, like League or yeah. whatever. <laughs> Especially now, you know, after after 18 years. Yeah. After Vietcong always of... been yeah Vietcong always been a very competitive game. Honestly, uh, it's because again it's because the gameplay styling, the gameplay styling is very competitive. And um, I don't remember whoever said it here, the the minimum options we have in Vietcong and the minimum uh, uh, objects we have on our screen is making it fun to play the game, because the game is fast enough in the movements, in the mean of movements, and uh, it's being uh, somehow realistic in the in the shooting. I mean, in another games you can take a lot of damage and you still can die. When in Vietnam you can take one headshot and it's over, which is perfect thing. Yeah. Uh, um. Guys, what? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Yarek. No, I just wanted to say that I'm using this mechanic uh, during this match quite a lot, like taking one one hit and die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, guys, do you, do you think it's a good option to have different uh, uh, different damage for different whip weapons? For example, currently we have the sniper is very powerful. I mean, sometimes you can hit the body and get a hit with one bullet. Do you think uh, the damage can be changed for another weapons as well? M in my opinion, no. But someone else just asked me uh, to ask this question. Mm, I, I like I like this I like this um, this idea of realistic that, that a Vector rev machine gun is going to cause more destructive power than a 22 caliber rifle. You know, it's just a fact of physics. You know, so I I like that the the particularly the um, the, the style the gauge of the weapon the actual um, I forget the name of it, but yeah, the power of the bullets themselves. I think that that should make a difference. I agree. I see. And w what do you think about uh, the suppressing option for the machine gunner, for example? If you are taking bullets from the machine gunner uh, around you, I mean, not on your body. How about uh, some animation on the screen of suppression, you know? Uh, some smoke, for example, little, very little smoke or something that make you feel that you are really under big fire? Well, yeah, I think the detail is important. If, if it's possible to do this in, you know, I've, I've seen this in other games, more modern games now, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I'm really into realism and I like I like the way that um, you might see yeah. smoke from your own gun or you know, even if, you, if you've if you done, if you've emptied two drums of, of machine gun bullets on a Degterev or an M60, the gun should be so hot you shouldn't be able to fire it, <laughs> for example. So I, I would even go so far as to make it really quite realistic, or at least have the option to make it realistic. If you want to turn that option on, then you could have like ultra real gun options or something. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you want, you want the smoke going out of the gun. <laughs> but you have also yeah you have also to choose if you want uh, to make the game realistic or competitive. It's maybe two different things, you know. So yeah, it's a balance question, isn't it? Yeah, I, agree. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's really nice to have options when you're running a server balance. to be able to to, to have those options. choices. Yeah. 
not to go too far with realistic option and not too far with the yeah. competitive I mean by that the far grenades and so on because Also, uh, Tabasco been asking about the uh, medic. I think that uh, the medic class should be modified by another options. Uh, more think options. It can be deleted, deleted, and the one bandage per one class. I want to help. You mean uh, that it's not being useful to have a medic or what? No, no one is playing playing medic to be honest in, in, to play in place yeah exactly to be honest to well, play as a yeah. medic uh, and to 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 to, re to revive not let's say not to revive let like to heal your friend no one is using it right now maybe in the co-op modes uh, no more of course of course in the of course in the co-op mode it's absolutely essential in the co-op mode to capture the yeah. flag it's <laughs> so yes yeah, so, but you can't take a whole class away just because one mode doesn't require it correct correct Correct, correct. I totally agree. Should I take it off? But it could be modified with another option. One more option. Well, I wouldn't use a bandage. I'm either standing or dead. Maybe the option there to drop a box. There's actually many, um, there's many custom co-op maps that allow you to pick up bandages and so anyone can, can have a single bandage heal as well. So that option really exists in the co-op. Yarek, can I ask you a question that's not specifically about Viet Cong, but more about Vietnam? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, I was just wondering what your first impressions were when you went there to research the game and stuff like this, and, and what made you, is there something specifically about Vietnam that you that you like that makes you want to do, or think about doing another Vietnam first person shooter, or, yeah. So, uh, let me tell you something. When we started making this game, I had no idea where Vietnam is. <laughs> I had no, no idea about the war, because you know we, uh, I grew up uh, in the communist era in Czech Republic, so we haven't, we, our history class was not, it doesn't contain any information about Vietnam War. Uh, so, I read a lot of books. I've seen a lot of movies, like from the good ones till the even the bad ones, like with Chuck Norris and and Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying that <laughs> that I when I started working on this game, I have no idea about Vietnam War at all. Uh, I'm just saying that when we started, I've read like. I don't know, 30 books, like no uh, non-fiction novels from the people who've been there. I've uh, read some documents, or saw movies. So we actually learned quite a lot about the, the war and it's actually very interesting. Like some wars, especially in the uh, 20th century, it was about you know firepower and just the amount of explosives in the air but this war was like quite sneaky about you never know where the enemies are they can hide in the jungle and so so this was very interesting and uh, and also, especially uh, the modern warfare, 
the the guns uh, of the like late 20th century and nowadays it's it's very technical it's like robots electronics navigations so the f i think this was the last war with this kind of with this kind of feel so i think it's it has its charm and then uh, like regarding the con the connection of like Czech people and Vietnam uh, it's we, Vietnamese are one of the biggest minorities in Czech Republic which is which is quite interesting because we, we were we were supporting the communists there. <laughs> we have a lot of immigrants from Vietnam to Czech Republic in the 70s and 80s. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a good uh, and interesting theme for for me and for people I know. That's interesting, and, and you you enjoyed your visit there when you when you went there. Well, actually, I wasn't there. It was I sent oh. uh, two members of the team, not uh, not myself. We had one designer and one artist, and they uh, they traveled like all the interesting locations, took a lot of photos. By the by the time they've been there, it was uh, it was actually. 21 years ago so they were fo uh, making photographs on kino film like not digital photos so <laughs> cool uh, and yeah uh, I didn't manage to get there Although, oh, no. I thought you did. Quite... Sorry, my apologies. No, no, it's. I wish I I would like my lead programmer who had uh, Teron with me. He went there. I don't know. Ten, fifteen years ago. But yeah, I didn't. I'd like to return back to few features. I'd like to sure. mention the importance of uh, user created content like maps or just some minor minor <laughs> mods. <laughs> yeah, <it's boy. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> okay, go, uh, go on. Uh, custom create maps, yeah, sure. Uh, well, I think I would say one of the reasons why people are still playing this game, right? Because there are yeah. so many content which has been created by the community. Yeah, I think so. Co-op maps, they will just get repetitive if you play the few of them all the time. And not the fact that you can download some user-created content and play it. Yeah, we have hundreds of co-op maps and it's true. Actually, it's quite rare. If you filter the results of games on Steam, for example, to games that have uh, a map editor, it's uh, shocking. If you actually, like like uh, me, almost 30 years old, I'm used to that games have game uh, map editors, and uh, they have really become rare. Well, uh, I, I worked five years at Bohemia, so I know exactly what the power of community can do with the content. 
I don't know if you know Arma and Daisy. It's yeah. really amazing, like what uh, these games are basically fueled by the creativity of the of the community. I think PUBG was bought in Arma Three. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think it started in Daisy actually. Then uh, it was made uh, made into Arma Three, and and this is where um, the guy uh, basically prototyped and uh, iterated the game mode, and he actually he actually came to Bohemia to uh, offer cooperation but uh, at the time Bohemia was quite busy with their own stuff so they rejected him Brandon Green so he went to this uh, Korean company and uh, they did a game together and it was quite popular and then some folks at Epic seen this mode and they updated their little game. And now this little game is no more little. Um, so, Yarek, uh, sorry, you can go ahead. I have a question. I will do it later. Continue, please. I just died. <laughs> it's okay. Ah, okay. Um, uh, how do you think uh, it's possible to to balance the graphic of the game with the let's say not too old systems i mean the game should be fair enough to be played on not high-end computers i mean if you look at battlefield uh, game it really needs very good computer to run it and uh, the best uh, graphics and so on uh, if you look in the second hand at uh, call of duty for example it can be played uh, on lower systems so uh, definitely uh, making the game in good graphics but it doesn't need the, the high-end PCs it's very important part as well do you think that's possible well it depends uh, what team you have if your team is focused on graphics then obviously you will aim for good graphics uh, if you are aiming for a gameplay which I do, then uh, you have gameplay first. Yeah. In my opinion, game uh, gameplay is at the, the first priority, but uh, graphics is also important. But I believe with nowadays engine, whatever you do with graphics, it would look really good. Well, especially uh, some companies, for them, it's just easier to produce uh, nice looking graphics mm -hmm. than iterate some interesting gameplay, because it's complicated. You have to think, yeah. you have to play test, you have to iterate. Uh, so for s so much easier to just produce a realist, photorealistic environments and uh, characters, and it looks good on on the pictures. And no yeah. one cares about how it plays. <clears throat> or That's maybe the. Not. That's something which uh, a lot of companies are doing. Yeah, so. or uh, also it would be uh, it would be possible to, to have multiple options for the graphics. Uh, for example, to go on low, medium, and high, or ultra, uh, and then it would be fair for everyone, you know. Well, yeah. Or do you think it's? Uh, no, no, it's. Uh, well, nowadays, if the game is made well, you have LODs, which descale the graphics. Yeah. We are playing a uh, 18 years old game. Graphic don't matter to us. Let's put it. Uh, but it's not that bad. Played some more recent games which looked worse i would say <laughs> well back back in 2003 uh, it looks insane but yeah no, but 2003 I think was one of the best but uh 
thing is that uh, it's not only visual sense which makes the atmosphere, you know. Uh, we already discussed today uh, about the importance of sound. And I would say it's still very competitive uh, regarding the other games which were released recently. I think the sound is still good. Weapons, actually, the models are still looking okay ish. The environment, not so much, but. That's why we are still playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and this game is about sounds, you know, characters, tactics, weapons. Jaký máš názor na uh, Rising Storm věc tam, když v podstatě je něco jakoby na, na, na podobný náměr? So, I haven't played uh, Rising Storm. I, I have it, but I haven't played it. Uh, so I don't have any opinion on it. Uh, but, I don't know, many of these games uh, I just found little bit too much complicated, little bit too cumbersome. So. Yeah, and of course it's, it doesn't make sense to replicate anything else. It's, uh, Deep Kong has its niche, um, uh, it's, it's, it's not armor and it's not Counter-Strike or Call of Duty and that's why we like it. So exactly. It so what do, what do you think about zombie mode? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I am not interested, honestly. <laughs> Never. <laughs> but no. there was an easter egg. <laughs> zombie mode is for Call of Duty. <laughs> it's nice in some games, but yeah, I don't really feel it's... Uh, it's a Viet Cong thing or a Vietnam thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm making fun. Uh, yeah, of yeah, on zombie mode. With that, uh, uh, ah, my English. Go on. <laughs> uh, yeah, a uh, code name Zulu, um, which we made together with Arthur Sam. Yeah, <laughs> it was a nice experiment actually. Time. <laughs> oh, I loved it. Uh, confused. I love the um, I love the zombie mode and trying your your mod. But um, that that was a mod, you know, cr a community created mod, which I loved playing. But I just think in the official game, we'd ha if we saw another Vietnam game from Yarrick and his team, I don't know if I'd care about zombie mode much. <laughs> <laughs> Jasně. A v tom Vietkongu, při, když jste to dělali, bylo tam nějaké, bylo tam nějaké omezení, jak daleko můžeš slyšet někoho běhat. Protože nám přišlo při nějakém zkoušení, že se zvukovou kartou, nebo s nějakou lepší zvukovou kartou, že člověk může slyšet opravdu o hodně dál, než normálně. A ještě možná uh, si promluvíš o tom, jestli, jestli ty, ty zvuky, co tam jsou u těch, uh, těch ptáků a různých takových věcí, že byly mapy, kde nějaký zvuky byly a byly mapy, kde byly zvuky minimální. A nějací hráči se prostě nějakým způsobem dokázali postarat o to, aby si tyhle ty zvuky úplně vyply. Potom v té hře jenom poslouchali, kdo kde jak běhá a podle těch zvuků poslouchali a chodili zabíjet. Tak jestli tam v tom Vietkongu je nějaký log na nějakou vzdálenost, kam člověka slyšíš běžet, jestli to mají všichni stejně, 
nebo jestli je to neomezený a každý to může zkusit jinak. So, uh, I will just quickly translate to English. Question is about sound uh, in Vietcong, how far uh, players can hear the footsteps. So I believe uh, there is some limit uh, to how far you can hear the sound uh, of footsteps, but I am not sure. It's just too, too long ago to... Current status: uh, the footsteps currently you can hear them uh, pretty far because it's not really balanced. You know, it's good. The footstep sounds is good currently, but uh, it somehow uh, can be heard from more than realistic, uh, more than realistic meters. I mean, in some positions, uh, it's it's not well designed for the maps. For example. Uh, in NVA base, if you are going to be in the garden, which is the middle of the map, uh, you can hear someone passing inside the tunnel under you. Uh, I mean, you are uh, above the ground and someone is in the tunnel and you can still hear it. So... Yeah, I would say it's wrong, be, obviously. Yeah, it's about balancing the sound. One to hear and one not to hear. Depends on position. Oh, it's well, the if I may, uh, some note about the sound design. Uh, in uh, Vietcong 2, we had a much better uh, sound engine, but uh, as you said, you can hear someone walking under you. It's just because most of the games, even today, just work with the discs, not with the actual level design. Uh, we had a pretty complicated sound engine for the first Vietcong 2. There's a lot of settings, and uh, not everything can be completely realistic. So, if you've got a <coughs> good sound card, you can hear sounds better because your sound card can handle more channels. That's, of course, wrong. We've tried it in the Vietcong 2, but we all know how the Vietcong 2 ended. Yeah. Hello, Shigure. Ciao. This <laughs> time, okay. Já jsem tady celou dobu, akorát jak už nehraju, tak tady akorát sedím na chatu. So that was Shigor, member of the team. <laughs> He's listening the whole time, but uh, this was the first time he spoke. So yeah, I thought... It's an interesting topic for him. And uh, there was also a question about uh, whether there are some logs, uh, like logging of what sounds have been used uh, or so. Uh, I don't think... <clears throat> I don't think uh, there is something like this, uh, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Regarding what... Oh, go on. No, no, say so. Uh, regarding I just, I just what you guys said, uh, that someone was essentially cheating by listening just to the sound steps, it's probably possible by just overwriting the data files of all those sounds with zeros. So if you uh, know all the voices, uh, all those ambience and stuff, and only gunshots and footsteps will be heard, that's how it works. Most of the cheats work like that, that you can uh, modify local data to give you some advantage. I don't think there's anything directly in the engine that would make it simple, but just rewriting those data would probably work. I've played a, a game recently, well, not recently, a year ago, um, with and one of the guys, it was about eight people per side and we played NBA base and one of the guys on our team was a young soldier who had come back from a tour in uh, Malaysia. He was a machine gunner and um, he, he'd actually seen combat and he'd, he'd obviously used different weapons in his training as well. And he said that when he used the M60 uh, and he was in the battle that, uh, that we were having in the capture the flag, he said it was so realistic it, he was getting deja vu from like real combat the, the, the ricochet sounds the 
different detail in the in the audio was was yeah he was really really impressed he hadn't played the game but um, yeah just thought I'd share that Mysleli. Já, já, já jenom, že prosím, nedělejte to v té hře, tak těžký, jak je to v tom originálu. Já... Jako myslíš singlovku? Ano. Nebo co? Ano, v tuneli v singleplayer hře. Já, já ty mise nenáviděl. Nenávidím. Ty jsou nejvíc právě. <laughs> Od uh, the question was about tunnels. What we, what we were thinking when we were doing them in the game. And that the... Yeah, but it's, it's so not terrible. bad, but yeah, not bad, but too hard, you know. Yeah, but uh, again, we were trying to recreate the experience of the Americans in the in the Vietnam. So I think uh, the tunnels, if the Vietnam, uh, if the American guys have to and had to enter the tunnels, I think they were quite freaked out. It wasn't really a pleasant experience, I would say. Uh, and I'm glad that everyone feels it like this <laughs> in the game as well. Just a note about channels from my side. When I was replaying Red Kong a few months ago, when I got in the tunnels, I hated them. <laughs> the thing is, uh, the tunnels is. Uh, pretty good example of developer's tunnel vision when you're developing the game when you're playing it constantly over and over going around testing and stuff most of us thought that the tunnels are pretty annoying and pretty bad but we wanted them to make the player feel stressed by the tunnels but since we were constantly playing it over and over we never realized how annoying it would be in the end at least that's from what I see. And then there is this uh, legendary flashlight issue. <laughs> yeah, I already talked yeah. about it. That. I promised that if there's ever a next Red Kong this time, I will code the tutorial hint to be actually shown. How about the. If I, I may, uh, <laughs> I was doing mission like for hours uh, until I realized there was a flashlight. Yeah, and also uh, the the second tunnel mission, which is in the game, uh, it's relatively small and simple, but uh, you know there is this. Uh, rule when you are in a maze you either uh, turn on all the crossroads to the left or you you turn on all crossroads to the right and finally you find the uh, the entrance the exit but we we made a trick of uh, this kind of rule uh, and the, the tunnels they are circle and the road goes in the middle, so if you are turning left all the time or right all the time, you will never get there. So it's just and and the tunnel is quite simple. So if you try it, you will realize that it's really small. But many people have uh, have got troubles with this tunnel. I wonder how many people really uh, want single player maps and uh, I really wonder how many levels or how many uh, uh, how many stages do you want in a game I mean if, uh, if it's really important to put efforts on the single player maps and maybe it should be as uh, a custom made maps also maybe
for the single player. I mean, maybe it could be a good option to, to have the custom maps for single player. People could be able to, to upload and another players to download and play the single player. Well, I think that's, uh, that's what the co-op missions are for. So you basically, co-op is like a single player experience, which can be experienced with uh, several players. You know, some people just don't have time to play multiplayer, like myself. I'm not really a multiplayer fan, because I don't have time. Well, you can see it from my results. <laughs> Chips, I'm not in the game now. Salut. Tabasco. <laughs> oh, I can see you. Kill this three guys. That's nice. But you died in the area. Yeah. I know I'm talking going through the forest and dish headshot uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also I'm playing 800 by 600. Oh, which means low resolution, yeah. <laughs> which means that uh, the enemies are really nicely blending uh, in the foliage. <laughs> you need four eyeglasses to, to see it. <laughs> Oh, but it's a good resolution. I really like it. Uh, it really depends on the screen. Uh, uh, what's the screen size you have right there? Well, I'm playing on a... What is it? 17-inch uh, notebook. Oh. Yeah, no problem with 17-inch. I play with 32, so... <laughs> I'm not sure if better resolution would help you, Eric. I've actually died... 15 times before I even saw a Vietco. And I'm playing in higher resolution. Yeah. I oh, so, so, so. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Actually, Riverdale is very nice map as well. It's also balanced. Hmm. Riverdale, Riverdale is was a very interesting map. It was done by our um, uh, weapon texture, Richard. He it's was doing text. He was doing textures for all the weapons, or all the vehicles, and uh, after when we are doing uh, the add-on, he he wanted to make a map on his own, so he did Riverdale. He did well, especially the water in there, and the waterfall looks really amazing. So uh, I think the first level with water was. Uh, stream stream map. This was the first one uh, in the game which with water, we had yeah. with this with this water. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was done. Uh, well, actually, this water here as well. It's animated texture, which we basically recorded on an actual like water bodies. And then uh, over in these how to say these little waterfalls, uh, there is another animated texture which goes over it. Obviously, now nowadays these effects are made by shaders, but we just. With a little So what do you think about the aiming of the guns? Sorry again, about what? Aiming of the guns? Aiming. Yeah. 
aiming in a Vietnam is very nice. Yeah. Uh, I think we shouldn't play with it too much. It should stay exactly the same. Yeah, best have you noticed that? Uh, have you noticed that uh, if you are in crouch and you aim, your gun or your character pops up like 10 centimeters, so you can ha you can aim over obstacles. It's unique and it's awesome. Yes, of course. I yeah, think no okay. one. No one used it, right? In the in other games. I don't know. That's right. It's unique. Very key. It's, it's unique. beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. The whole aiming thing in Viet Cong is really perfect. The speed of it, especially. Yeah, never seen better in any game, for me. You know, it makes the game competitive. It's fast, sharp, and accurate. Mě, jestli teda ještě můžu dodat, tak mě se líbí, že to není přehraný, jako třeba v CSGO, tam prostě to jakáčko, pokud tam střílíš, tak půlku obrazu styl, a tady je to takový jako, jo, že to jako hází, ale není to jako přehnaný. Hmm. Yeah, we, sp we spent quite a lot of time uh, thinking about the weapons. Iterating, so we have this kind of result. Well, actually, uh, I think Vietcong was the first game with the iron sight uh, in made in 3D. I think before uh, Battlefield, and, uh, Hidden and Dangerous, they had uh, just the 2D texture when you aim. Correct. If if you remember, yeah, yeah, and then Call of Duty copied it year year after Vietcong. They the first Call of Duty was released in 2004. Sometimes people are saying that they've invented it, but they haven't. They copied it. Yeah, let's just please don't let's don't ever have aiming like Vietcong too. Please don't. <laughs> It was horrible. Yeah. In Vietcong 2 we tried to copy Call of Duty and we failed miserably. Yeah. Yeah, well, some things in that point two were not so bad, like uh, someone wrote soundtrack, but also have a definitely better physical engine and mm. mid quote. Yeah, well, we improved a lot of things. The problem was that uh, we had only one year to develop the sequel. Uh, we obviously haven't made it, so it took us 18 months. Uh, but with our little team, we managed to rewrite the render engine, the network engine, the physics engine, uh, and made a game, uh, which was insane with you know, five programmers in a on the team to do all these engine changes. Oh, uh, and I didn't mention the AI. It was also rewritten for Vietcong 2. So it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, shouldn't I've have seen done it. some presentation from 2006, I think, about uh, Vietcong 2, why fall?
but I still enjoy the game in this time, even though most people don't play it. You mean Welcome to? Yes. Uh, well, the I main like problem. When it... Yeah. So go on. I like both game. The main problem uh, when it was released was the frame rate. Yeah. So that did, it didn't run. Yeah, so people the could, was could... really low. Uh, nowadays. With with today's machines, obviously it's there is no problem with speed. Correct. Yeah. But the game is just. Different. I still remember I had an Nvidia GT something, and I was so depressed that I couldn't play Vietcon 2 properly because my FPS was like 30 and <laughs> it was horrible. Shigure, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah I'm still here. So tell us something. <laughs> You're asking me a social lone wolf to actually talk. Well, what about guys if you want to ask something technical, which Eric couldn't understand, couldn't answer because he doesn't have that much understanding of the technical stuff of the Vietcong. Try to shoot at me, maybe I'll remember something. I can have uh, some Zoom questions. Go if on. If you someone remember how many levels are cut from the game? Oh, I don't think I can answer this question. It's mainly been... maybe for me. Well, I think we haven't cut any levels from the game. We just released uh, even the bad ones. Especially in the single player. <laughs> Some of those were cut to different levels or changed. I really don't remember remember anything that was really deleted. Well, what about the uh, Red Dawn mission? It was cut out or it was just a DLC? No, that was done after by the guys in their free time. Oh. Uh, rice fields in the Red Dawn was... Uh cut because in the game is still one briefing what was deactivated. Uh, that's true, Ricefield was one of those missions I think we never used in the original Vietcong and it was rather reused. Not sure right now. Well, there was stuff that was cut from the Vietcong that we had prepared but never had time to uh, actually implement. If you remember all those funny things we managed to implement regarding the copy protection 
there were a few more plans, even there were voiceovers for it, but we just never had time to actually implement it in the game. One of those were when the game detected you have a pirate copy, uh, the briefing for the mission would start with Captain Rosenfield saying, well, we had a mission planned, but now I had a message from the HQ that some pirates hijacked our helicopter, so we cannot fly <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> nice of you. We had a few stuff like that, and of course there was a lot of changes, stuff that was planned, and we found out it's not exactly working as it's supposed to be. One uh, example that comes to mind is uh, those missions in Swamp, when you are sneaking in the Swamp, uh, going to save the hostage. The original plans for it were much, much longer, much more complicated, and we had to cut it down to something manageable for the player. Yes. Uh, well, uh, and what about some Easter eggs? Because I'm a speedrunner, and in my tactic, we I used uh, the in the first mission, you have to like tap ten times doors from your bunker, and you can then uh, drive a car uh, in the second mission, which saves some time. So I want to ask if there are some Easter eggs that you can reveal that aren't uh, like. I think most of the easter eggs were found and you have to re realize one thing when it comes to easter eggs. Almost all of them were done, we have had uh, going through serious sleep deprivation, not sleeping correctly for a few days, sometimes just a few hours under the table, kicking Yarek to move aside so I could sleep a bit. So a lot <laughs> of those last time uh, <coughs> easter eggs that were caught in the game Stuff like cuckoo, uh, clock in the jungle, all those stupid things I made in the base with zombies and clicking on the doors and stuff like that. It was just us pretty much running out of steam, just getting ready to release the game. And we found out we still have a few hours and no really, really bad bugs to handle. So maybe we could add something funny. Yeah, I don't know, I think all of those easter eggs we made were actually in the game and were found, but I might be missing something. Maybe some other guys made easter eggs I didn't know about. I vaguely remember zombies and tank in the base and a few other things, but it's been years and frankly I don't clearly remember much uh, from the time we were finishing the Viet Cong because there was just no time for sleep and it if you ever had a time when you were not sleeping for a few days, you know what I'm speaking about. If you didn't try drugs, I'm told it's similar. No, no, don't try drugs. I, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> uh, well, I have uh, one more question. It's about the last difficulty, the most hard. It's about the Vietnam difficulty. If it was uh, tested during the development, and it was successful because it's really buggy in some missions. And some missions cannot be done without like uh, certain tech uh, strategies. Was it tested? Well, surely it was tested. Does it work? Um, maybe not. <laughs> because uh, if you look back into the year <coughs> 2003, uh, there wasn't more than 30 FPS, right? Or it, it was like mm -hmm. really like to today's date, it was laggy. But I I don't think that no one really played it. I think it was just experimental or something like that. No, I think we we played it. Uh, imagine that we had testers who've been playing it eight hours a day for more than two years so like you know th these people they know exactly which pixel on which level is there so i can believe that these people could easily do it but okay, i was okay. definitely yeah. I, I was definitely not playing all the missions in uh, the highest difficulty. Uh, 
zeptat, co... Já si myslím, že hra se třeba primárně tvářela jako single player, tak jestli jste očekávali, že to bude mít postupem času takový úspěch i v multiplayeru, vzhledem k tomu, že se stále pořádají LAN turné a podobně, a jaký šance jste vlastně dávali tomu, že se to pořád bude takhle hrát i, i, i ty offline turné po 20 letech, jestli jste o tom vůbec přemýšlelo. Uh, so the question was about how much we th thought about the game being multiplayer and uh, how much we thought about the support. And I think the the answer for this is that uh, if you remember uh, how we treated the demo, which was a multiplayer match, and we released it really because we wanted uh, the game to be tested properly with the real players. And uh, we even created few updates on the on the demo, which was quite unusual because at the time companies have released demo and then a uh, few months later they released the game. But we released demo and a week after we released patch on the demo and then another patch. Uh, so people were quite surprised by this approach and uh, we continued this with the game, like after we released the game, we uh, we were observing what what's going on with the game. We've been playing, we've been monitoring the situations, and uh, we were doing updates. And I think this is essential for any multiplayer uh, game that it's being updated by the developers. So. Uh, I think we were uh, we were totally uh, aware of the potential the multiplayer has, and we really tried hard with like if you remember the anti cheat how uh, how how often we did updates just to keep the cheaters uh, like behind us. Uh, obviously now no one is doing this, but uh, at the time we were releasing updates faster than the cheaters were doing the cheats so people enjoyed that as well and yeah it's so we had a lot of can people I... mm -hmm. yes okay, can i ask how was it with the game spy support was it like from day to day that the game spy ended their servers and i think that's the main thing which uh, like killed the most community of Vietcong was from all of a sudden like no servers then we had to find a way how to play again what well what do you uh, think about that? so uh first of all uh, the server uh, server matchmaking server listing it was uh, quite difficult and it would require quite enormous programming effort if we do it ourselves. So we had to rely on this uh, middleware. Even nowadays, uh, most of the companies doesn't do it because, you know, Epic and the Steam, they have their own uh, support for this. So they, they supply this. But at the time there was no Epic, there was no Steam. So we had to use some service which would be uh, doing this. So we we choose uh, Game Spy, which was kind of perfect for that. But then obviously it ran out of business and uh, seized their support. So, but it was at the time where the company was not really operating. I mean, started on, so there wasn't anyone who could do anything about it yeah and my uh, question was it was like uh, they ended their support from day to day it was like they they just told you and then was over with the support of Vietcong servers or there well, was some uh, time before you could you you have to remember that uh, the company was no more like our company Theron. we were doing oh. other things in different companies so when did hap when this uh, game spy thing happened, there wasn't anyone who could like receive the message and do anything about it. So 
maybe they told us in advance, but there was no one to be told. So, like the That's why it was essentially that when they changed owner and made new stuff and so on, they decided they need to make more money and started to charge a lot of money for continuing services. They probably wrote to someone in Take Two informing that that although uh, that until Take Two pays a lot of money to them, they will shut the game down. But it seems that no one actually listened to them because they ended all support for all of those older games. It was not just us; it was hundreds of other games that were depending on the GameSpy. They just ended it and moved on. Well, uh, I think the most damage was actually done by uh, the changes within the publishers company. Because in 2004 they formed a new label, 2K, and since then uh, basically they replaced the management of the company, which were the guys which were working with us on Vietcong 1. They left the company. So we were basically dealing with completely different people and they had no, not so much interest in, in this kind of game, which was really bad. So uh, that was also uh, one of the reasons why Vietcong 2 was so-so, because there was no support on the publishing side. Like properly, they just they were there just to burn the CDs or uh, manufacture the CDs, the DVDs, put it in a box, put it on the shelves, and as you go, ciao. So they that was not. That's just so sad. Uh sad story yeah it's that that's why we decided to uh, end the company because we were just like this backstabbing or like because we spent quite a lot of time uh, on this second game it was I think worse crunch than with the first one Shigor what do you say was it I don't remember I don't want to remember <laughs> Just looking back and realizing that we've made all that stuff in the Vietcong 2 in one year, it's crazy. It was not just uh, art, remember. not just design levels, but all those code stuff. I just don't know how we did manage it. I remember the Vietcong 2 crosshair, like the aiming, it was like really zoomed in. Then the explosive yeah. barrels across the maps, it wasn't Correct. like fun, I think. Then was the sprinting, uh, the stamina thing. Yeah, the the, the sprinting and the slow motion and the aiming, uh, the zooming, it was horrible, honestly. Yeah, zooming was, r like the M4 was like really in your face. I don't think that yeah. could be like... It was simply zooming the screen into the enemy with the crosshair. <laughs> I actually agree today, I'm not sure what I thought about it uh, then, but when I tried Vietcong 2 a few weeks ago, just to look at another game I was working out, I was pretty surprised how stupid the zoom on some weapons looks. <laughs> but the Vietcong 2, it was constantly, as Yarek said, we had really issues with the publisher, they were changing. <coughs> requirements uh, I cannot say from day to day or week to week but if you remember Vietcong 2 there was this uh, control of the team when you could specify a point where they can move or where they can attack and so on all yeah. of that was just pretty much hacked on the game in the last few weeks because uh, Brothers in Arms I think it was called came out uh, that time 
and some guy from the take two decide that it's great and we have to have it there too so we just suddenly had to create a tutorial to create the mechanics of course in the levels it was pretty much useless but we had to change it i don't have yeah. very good experiences with vietcong 2. Sure. Yeah. i think we we came i think we came with this idea ourselves <laughs> really sorry i think so okay uh i remember it that it was just uh told from the well i don't know if i remember correctly we had some uh, videos of our design uh, meetings and i vaguely remember that i was screaming a few times that this is bullshit and it won't work but <laughs> Sorry. I know it was years ago, and uh, you know how it's with your memory. You tend to remember good stuff, good stuff, not the bad stuff. And Vietcong 2 was definitely more of the bad stuff. Yeah, I, I remember that in Vietcong 2 multiplayer, I think you had something like RPG, like you have to gain experience to unlock uh, certain weapons and classes. I don't think that was a great idea too. No, it's just love, yeah. But, but not at all. It was can be disabled or enabled. Yeah, it was an option, wasn't it? Yes, I don't it know. is an option. One question I've got for you guys, those of you who played Vietcong 2, uh, about the multiplayer. One of the things I remember is that I've considered Vietcong 2 multiplayer better than the Vietcong 1. Yes. But I was surprised that most of the people uh, from the community decided it sucked. I can see how the single player wasn't very good, but... Uh, at the time, I thought that the uh, multiplayer part was very good. What's your Correct. thoughts about it? The multiplayer wasn't a competitive game, honestly. I mean, as we said before, that the whole aiming and the sprinting uh, features was really bad. The sprinting was really slow in motion. Uh, also, the aiming, there was no aim at all. It was simply zooming, as the screenshot I have sent currently on the Discord. And the whole movement, it was really heavy. I mean, it was really heavy to move in the game. And the sound of the movement, it was bad experience from my side, honestly. Especially after playing VC1, it was totally different game style. Hmm. Yeah, I think I, I can I specify that a little more about the movement. I, I would describe it as moving on ice because you would always slide a little further and that like um yeah, killed you more to actually True. I don't know, the movement wasn't very precise. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I simply didn't play the game for many years now, but I still have some bad memories. So <laughs> I'm showing them up. I quite uh, enjoyed the single player of VC2. I quite enjoyed the campaign that that, that was featured with the Tet Offensive and all that. That was kind of cool. But in terms of the game, the one the one main thing that put me off of VC2 was the sound. I, I didn't like the sounds of, of the guns and everything I loved about VC1 was not in those sounds. And I, I that's what stopped me playing it, actually. One thing I liked in VC2 multiplayer is the animation of the uh, fuel gallons blowing up and <laughs> also that also the damage it made there. It's not only animation, also damage to the player around the gallons. Uh, 
uh, what, what do you think about the uh, drivable vehicles that was uh, presented in Red Kong 2? Larger maps, you had like a jeep or tanks. Was like in mind that you could add helicopters, something. No in helicopters, not maps. but <coughs> but uh, vehicles we wanted to have. That was one of the results of the remade uh, multiplayer code that we could have uh, vehicles there. Um, Uh, can we switch the map? No, it's not working for me. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah, it doesn't work for me either. <laughs> I guess. Uh... So guys, uh, I think I will, uh, I'll probably uh, quit this uh, session. I think uh, Dark wanted to do some something else. I don't know what's the plan. Okay. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We can maybe do it. We can yeah. maybe repeat it at some point. It was fun for well, me. Thank you very much. To, Thanks, to talk dude. to you. Really, we appreciate Thanks you being here. here. So thank you, really. Yes, man. Thank you, man. Thank you a Thanks. lot for being here again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Love your work, bro. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you too, Dark, for all the efforts. Yeah, Thanks, good work, you. mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Shigo, as well, for being here. Oh, thank you, guys, for reminding me that the peak of my career was almost 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's the idea I always get from the people who still play Red Kong. Oh, fuck, 20 years and... Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but you did create I'll something that lasted. So thank you guys for attending thank you this event. Eric. Sure. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. It's been great. Thank you, Marty. Yeah, maybe someday again. Yeah. Maybe. Definitely. Why not? Yeah, thank you for having me. Tired now. It's too late to talk for me. <laughs> Past your bedtime, Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two and a half here. Ah, <laughs> uh, Yarek. I streamed this uh, event, you know, uh, all the questions and everything, but it's not public yet. Uh, I wonder if you don't mind, I can make it public, maybe. Yeah, for I don't some mind. players who, for some players who wasn't here, you know, they missed the event. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will. Yeah, I hope I haven't said not too many things, bad things about publishing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Can you beep some of the worst ones? <laughs> <laughs>
the assassins can find me. <laughs> I don't It'll know why Ko is mad. Alright, alright. So... Cool. 